everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to the show. Let's talk about watches. My name is Tim and along with my partner, Michael Davis, we welcome you to tonight's festivities. We're going to do a couple of things for you tonight. One of them is uh, go figure no sooner than the deal ends than uh, people are emailing, you know, where did it go? And I'm referring, of course, to that five exotic wood luxury box that we had uh, a few weeks ago. So uh, we've spoken with our source on that, and we are bringing it back for tonight's presentation. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the archives, and we're actually going to bring back the footage that gave you the original tour of, of that, which is uh, very comprehensive, and I think you'll understand why that's such a very hot property. Uh, and, it, and it should be, especially for those of you who are getting the sets. You're going to see that. Uh, the other, of course, tonight, as we've been talking about in our promo, Rick Kalina from Jean Marcel has joined us for tonight, and we've got a live segment with him. Rick Kalina has been synonymous with Jean Marcel for quite some time, and he'll delve into what it means to be pure Swiss, diamond lapped and polished cases, the more antique but effective method they use for layering in gold, and so on. First, a couple of things very quickly. One of them, if you haven't yet joined our email, I strongly encourage you to do so. We're not going to spam you. We hate spam as well. But we are going to give you the heads up on all of the special deals and new brands and so on that we are putting together for you pretty much on a daily basis. You're only going to get about an email a day. Like I say, we're not going to spam you. We never sell. We never share our list. So you will see is safe with us so join us and get the heads up also by being on that list you're going to have access to the closed group on Facebook you don't have to join it of course but I encourage you to because not only is it free that group gets advanced notice of everything even ahead of the general email list plus of course there's discussions in there and sometimes we even run specials only for that group so it's a great time to join. So just on the email, and then you're going to get an option to join that closed group. And of course, that'll be obviously in an email. So there you go. The other thing I want to mention very quickly, especially since tonight we're going to do both the exotic wood, the five wood box, and of course, John Marcel, Pure Swiss Mechanical Automatics, and that is PayPal credit. Think of it as sort of that six pay option that some of you are familiar with, only with greater flexibility. Because with PayPal credit, once you qualify, you can skip a month or not. There's nothing down up front. And as long as you pay it out by the due date six months out from the time of purchase, there's no payment or interest between now and then. You can decide when it happens. It's the utmost inflexibility. And like I say, if you pay it off by the due date, no interest of any kind charged. So it's a very smart way to go. It's an option when you are checking out on talkaboutwatches.com. In the very last page of the checkout, it'll say, do you want to do PayPal credit? You click that. Once you qualify, you are good to go. So it really is that easy. It's effective and it's really affordable. So great method for you guys and I hope it helps. All right. With that stated, we're going to get underway. Please enjoy our show opening and we are back right after this explosion. Check it out. Hey everybody, this is Tim, and today we're going to take a look at one of the single best deals we've ever encountered on a luxury watch box. Let's check it out. We're going to take you through opening the package so you get the full experience. Notice how large that box is. That's because there's two watch boxes inside, but we'll come back to that. Here's how it's shipped. Now look how beautifully boxed this is. See how well that's protected? That's important. I've seen shipments of luxury watch boxes get destroyed because the packaging wasn't there. Notice how there's protection on every corner. And that's true not only in the top of the watch, here's what's going on underneath. Beautifully shipped. Now dimensions. This measures 18 and a quarter by 9.75 by 8. So big, heavy box, all solid wood construction. All right, let's open it up. Notice how this is packaged 360 degrees. There's your first shot at the five woods that make up the luxury veneer. Now, I've turned this over so you can see the padded base. That means this design for even your finest furnishing. No scarring ever. All right, now let's look at this from the top. This is five exotic woods, and know how it's kind of freeform, almost like a paintbrush put these exotic woods in. Five separate exotic wood veneers. Ebony, burl, ice, lace, and rosewood. All very rich, warm, almost fire tones. Notice the pattern. And since these are all real, no two of these will ever be alike. The lacquer finish on this is absolutely exquisite. You are going to love this. And the exotic wraps around on five sides. Let's take a look at the inside. Now, first of all, you want to fill out that card because there's a custom plaque that you're going to get included. Don't eat the silicon gel, you Tide Pod guys. And that's the key that goes, of course, to the lock. Now, inside of this, you've got two levels, each holding 10. 
Now there's two tabs to pull this out. I grabbed it there with just the one hand, but there's the look underneath. And here is three of the watches, not included by the way, but they're about 52 millimeter. Each slot can accommodate 62. Hardware, all metal, all handset, hinges and lock. Padded leather red interior keeps all watches, even gold watches, safe from scarring. This is not the watch box you hide. This is the watch box you showcase. So the retail price for this box is $525, but you can reserve one now through TAW for just $279, shipping included. And if you'd like two, just $399, shipping included. Six months, no payments or interest through PayPal credit. Well, hey, everybody, as promised, Rick Kalina on the show. It's taken a while to get him, but we are thrilled to welcome him uh, this evening. Uh, Rick, first, thanks for being on the show. And uh, secondly, for someone, uh, maybe they're, they're new to us or they're new to Jean-Marcel, uh, what is it that makes Jean-Marcel especially attractive to you? The real issue there is, first of all, we're 100% pure Swiss. There's no parts in your Jean-Marcel when it's running that were made in the Far East, that were made in China, that somebody's going to accuse you of wearing a Swinese watch. And the reason all this happened was I started in the watch business when I was just very young, and 20 years went from the bottom of the number one watch company then to the top of it because the fellow who owned the third generation was my godfather. Then what happened is the company changed hands. They didn't like the commitment that I had. First of all was the quality, second to design, and most important was to your customers. So, of course, we had to split ways, and I went to Switzerland looking for a small company that made phenomenally terrific quality products that I could take over and grow. Well, Rick, one of the uh, the, uh, the immediate questions, or not so much question, but, but statement I want to get into, uh, you and I have done television for well over a decade, and uh, many a time on the show you've talked about uh, Pure Swiss and the advantage of, of Pure Swiss and why it's important. Uh, for someone who doesn't know the term, but what does pure Swiss mean when it's used in conjunction with Jean Marcel? All right. In the case of the Swiss watch industry, the law that you need to fill to call your watch Swiss movements was made. The words are very suspicious, very suspicious and the key, key words. What they are is, if you tell the Swiss government that 50.1% of the cost of the pieces in the movement were made in Switzerland. Then you can say it's a Swiss movement, it's a Swiss made watch, and everything else. Now just to put it in clear perspective, that can be done so easily because on a day and date mechanical automatic watch, for example, there are about 100 pieces in that movement. And to do this amazingly profitable game, you need 14 to 16 pieces of the 100 to really be made in Switzerland. Well, those 14 to 16 Swiss pieces will cost you more than the rest of the pieces made in Hong Kong. So, Rick, what it, it, it well, I, I guess I, I need to, uh, to draw a bit from, from your expertise and experience here for a second. Uh, do you think it's more of a, a motivation for uh, a, a, a profit margin that we're not seeing more of these companies going uh, pure Swiss, or is there a, another reason in your, your experience? Because obviously uh, many companies out there have X percentage that's being made in, in usually Asia. They have to because the pricing in Switzerland is not pricing like they have in China for labor, for machines, for rent, for everything. So. As most of the viewers would know, to make a product in Switzerland, and that's where the finest watches are created, invented, built, and everything, versus knocking them out with a computer-driven machine in China, the Chinese labor costs and the rest of it, my God, you can produce something in China, play this game about it, really call it Swiss, and it'll cost you about 10 to 12% of what it'll cost to make the real watch in Switzerland. Well, let me very quickly, Rick, I want to get your, your thoughts on this one uh, percentage idea, and then we're going to leap into the Jean Marcel's. Uh, recently, the Swiss moved the requirement to be Swiss made from roughly 50 to, I think it's now roughly uh, 60. Uh, what's your take on what that's done for the industry, if anything? What that means is they were trying to fight back because more and more companies are going to do the 50.1, so they figured, well, we could save a little Swiss business, we'll move it up to 60. But let me tell you, the statistics also are the same numbers. 
if it's a 100-piece day-date automatic movement and you got away with 14 to 16 pieces being Swiss to qualify, now you can do 16 to 18 pieces and you'll qualify again. That's not very much out of 100 pieces in your watch. So it sounds like that really hasn't been... Um, actually, I'm going to do a quick edit here. Uh, let's go back here and then we'll go here. So it sounds like that hasn't really moved the needle a whole lot when it comes to Swiss. Well, it helped it a little bit because remember this Swiss game about watches that honestly everybody who knows from the old days what it used to be, they're going to say this is, you know, this is really not right. It's not fair. Well, the bottom line is on a one year annual basis, it represents about $3 billion. That's a lot of money that. China is getting the production, they're getting the revenue, they're getting the jobs, they're getting everything. But unfortunately, the customer who buys what he thinks is a Swiss watch that he believes it is for high quality, he isn't getting what he thinks he's buying. Well, well Rick, I'm going to use that as a segue to get into our first uh, Jean Marcel. And by the way, as we've been showing you already with our, our cutaway shots tonight, guys, uh, there will be two Jean Marcels available. Well, one is a uh, Claris, it's on a strap, and then we are going to move into a bracelet model that's a, that's a very different model. And I'll do some cutaway. So for those of you who are already following the, the link, and by the way, if you're new to us, remember, you do not have to wait for the watch to be on the screen. Uh, if you are watching on a mobile device, as a lot of you are, it's going to be beneath this broadcast. If you're watching on a computer, I believe the uh, thread of questions is going to be to the right. At the top of that, there's going to be a link. Just click that. You'll go to all the final pricing right now. If you have a question, uh, just type it in, and uh, we'll have one of our staff try to get the answer out to you as, as soon as possible. So, Rick, let's jump, if we can, into the, uh, into the Claris. And uh, as you guys – in fact, Rick, I want to – uh, maybe we could have you comment a little bit about the, the pricing uh, just very briefly because I, I know uh, in off-camera discussions that you were very you were being very deliberately uh, almost over the top aggressive with your, your pricing to make your debut and talk about watches a huge hit. The pricing that I set up for these pieces for the launch of Jean Marcel with you and you're an old time buddy, you're right, over a decade we've been together. Um, I set up prices that honestly are below cost, that give the people who see it, listen carefully, and understand the difference of what we design, what we engineer, and what we custom build. It is the finest you can get. And what's important here is we took watches that normally would retail at $1,895 at $1,995. And as you know, Tim, we put sell prices to you that your customer is going to look at it, scratch his head, and said, wow, is this real? Yes, it is real. Now, the exciting part for the person who's lucky enough to get themselves one is that there are very few. Remember, we're the number one producer in the world of limited edition pure Swiss complications. We only build 300 hand engraved numbered pieces of every model. Now, Tim, what that means to anybody who gets one, they put it on their wrist and in the entire world, there are only 299 other people that can be wearing the same watch. Well, Rick, I want to get into a couple of things if we can, because I'm such a fan of Jean Marcel for a lot of reasons, but here's two of them. One, can you talk a little bit about diamond lapped and polished cases, which is something I really think makes Jean Marcel stand out in the field of luxury watches. And the other is you use a very heavy gold layering technique. And I was wondering if you could expound a bit on that for us. Sure. We're really proud of the two things you brought up. I'll tell you why. Because first of all, diamond lapping and polishing is again the old way that you used to do platinum cases, 18 karat, 14 karat. It's the old best way to level, get rid of any bumps or little teeny marks, and then mirror, mirror, polish, because what you're using is diamond paste, and you're doing it on a buffing wheel by hand. None of our cases are computer manufactured, computer stamped, computer routinely polished and rubbed and whatever else you want to call it. Everything is done in Switzerland by hand. Diamond lapping and polishes is the one that gives you the absolute finest mirror finish to your case. So once it's been diamond lapped and polished, and when you guys get this home, by the way, you're, you're really going to see what uh, Rick and I are uh, referring to because this, this is wearing a mirror. And you're going to notice, and maybe even for the first time, where uh, once you see the lack of distortion 
in the surface finish of a Jean Marcel, then you're going to start seeing it in other cases. For oh, I didn't really notice that before. Uh, it, it's it's very distinctive and it is very luxurious. So with with that stator record, I think it's important that people understand the the lapping and polishing that goes on to create the, the, this amazing steel finish. You go to, I, I think it's fair to say, almost an antique process when it comes to applying gold to that uh, surface. And, and why do you, you do that and what's the result of that? Okay, the reason that we do um, the much better traditional, old-fashioned, very expensive and very slow plating on all of our cases is because we don't use PVD particle vapor displacement, which does probably, I've heard as little as a 50th of one micron, it's just almost like a uh, chemical gas attachment to metal. And it looks nice, but not for very long. What we use is we use 10 micron plating. Now, the reason we use 10 is because it's so much thicker, so much durable. To get through that is going to take an awfully long time. And more important even than 10 micron is that the first top layer that's exposed is called the hard plate. Now, that's about three to four times harder plate on one micron on the top than all of the rest of the gold sitting beneath it. So you've got the best you can get. And the only thing better, honestly, as you know, Tim, is going to be a super heavy solid gold case. And by the way, they're going to do the same production, the same diamond lapping and polishing. When you look at it, there are no waves in the metal. There's no little teeny micro dots. There's nothing. It's beautiful. It's a hand done mirror finish. So, Rick, with the uh, the case being explained there a, a little bit, and thank you for that. Let let's delve into uh, what is on the on the inside because you've also, of course, insisted on the, on the Swiss mechanical automatic. So let's talk a bit about the 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 Claris and the the movement that you chose and what it does for us. First thing that we're again very proud of is that every single watch we build, we get the top of the line pure Swiss movement. Now, what that means is you can get the Swiss movements from the factory, and you can get it in three different qualities. One is the least expensive, same design, same engineering, but thinner metal, softer metal, much less finishing, but it is the same engine, if you will. You can upgrade one step to a slightly better, better finishing, sturdier metal in the middle range. Or if you really want the best, there's only one. You go up to the top, it's considered a platinum grade movement. It's so much more expensive than the bottom caliber. But you know what? We take that and we rebuild that. Here's something that most people don't know. Um, everybody sort of knows what a certified chronometer rating is, which is where you test the watch in six different positions to make sure of how well it runs to perfect time. And then you record it. Well, you know how picky I am, Tim, and I got to do it better. So we test ours one more. We go one extra test, and then we take how it performed, and we put that on each individual watch's certification sheets, which tells you all about your watch that you got. Uh, if memory serves, that's a sheet that you actually include in the box with the wristwatch. Yes, we do. The limited edition certificate, all the data that signs, and honestly promises and guarantees what we told you you're getting is what you're getting, but we give you all the information if you will the the testing time testing is is the most accurate reading you're going to get on our product now the other good thing and i know we're getting a little, a little deep but maybe we could talk about it you can always edit it out if you'd like to almost every company when they send out their product to be cosc certified timing in the different positions they send the movement only to be tested it's not cased it's not dialed it doesn't have anything they put it in like a molded plastic egg crate kind of thing and ship them out. And then that's how they put them in different positions, test them, and, and write how they did and return them. Well, they do that for a good reason. If the watch does not pass the accuracy test, then what they do is they just take them out of the trays, readjust, re-regulate, and then when they think they've got it right, they send it out again. Well, you know what? We're really sure of what we're delivering and what we built. So we case that whole watch up the way you're going to buy it. And that's how we send it out. And you know what? That's a whole different expense because the other way, what's it going to cost you to take it apart, take off the hands, take off the dial, take it out of the case, do everything. It's going to cost you a fortune if you did that. So they don't do that. With us, what you get is the completely assembled, 
perfectly done product with the certificate of how well it ran the same way, real world, that will run on your wrist. So, Rick, let's talk the, uh, the the complications here. I've got, well, let's talk complications, then I, I have one more question. So, what complications have you set up in this particular Claris? In this particular Claris, we did the hour hand, the minute hand, the quick set calendar, but what we've done is we've re-engineered position the calendar wheel. What we've done, and I'll hold it up for a minute so they can get a better look, is this watch is very different because your dial shows a triangular opening not just a little teeny little circle with a little number, a whole triangular setting that spells out the entire information for you and then has contrast, gold enameling, black enameling, and it makes a visual presentation. Honestly, as you know, it stands out and when you get the light playing off of the double anti-reflective coated genuine sapphire crystal, just a little tidbit of information, um, it really sparkles, it jumps, and it makes a personal statement. And you know what? When I started 53 years ago, they told me the dial of the watch is the thing people are going to look at, and either it catches their eye or it really doesn't. Well, all of your Jean Marcel's are unique, different. They cost a lot to build, but they're fabulous, and they're all eyepieces people look at. Uh, Rick, one more question on the, on the Claris, or, the, or really more of an observation I just want you to expound on. The bezel on this, and it's going to be difficult. I'll, I'll do various cutaways here, but it, uh, hopefully we can illustrate it. This is actually a concave bezel, whereas almost every other bezel on the planet, if they're going to do a polished, is the, uh, is the convex or the, the outward curve. Uh, this inward curve is, is, to me, fascinating. It's almost an, an optical illusion uh, in a way. And I think if memory serves as well, I think you guys were the first to do this. We did it three days before one of the most expensive brands in the world, and they launched it at the Basel Fair on, I think, the second day at Basel. We launched ours two days before Basel. So technically, I guess we beat them, we did it first. Now, there's a lot of talk in Switzerland about that because you know how I like to create and do things first, and then we always find other companies, if it's good, they come along behind it because it was a good idea, and they add it to their lines. Well, the company which amazed me, and I really couldn't believe it, God bless, the company that did the same unique first time in the industry was Paddock. And let me tell you, Paddock also spent well over a year trying to perfect how to, because you know what, they diamond lap and polish by hand also. When you have a valley on the bezel that curves inward and upward, and you're going to hand diamond lap and polish it so there's no waves, there's no marks, there's no anything. That process alone took us over a year. And you know what? We delivered it, and everybody said, wow, look at that. We can't believe you could get it done. Well, of course we got it. You know, you know how I am, right? If you can do it, and everybody has a hard time, my gosh, I got to do it. Well, Rick, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and let's, let's move to the, uh, the, the other watch. Uh, again, to recap this one very quickly, and obviously we're keeping an, an eye out here for quantity. There are two finishes for the same watch. One of them is the white or silver. I'm not exactly sure how Mike set that up for us tonight. Uh, that's the one with no gold layering. And that's going to go for just slightly less than the one layered in the yellow gold. And if you caught the last few minutes, then you know why. There's a serious amount of gold that's involved here using, a, and, and frankly, a technique that just is not used that much anymore because there's less expensive ways that use less gold. But frankly, this is the uh, superior way. So your choices are the yellow, or the white, uh, obviously, Same while given quantity last. And that price right. break, by the way, is, is huge. Uh, Rick, moving to the, to the next watch, uh, we're moving from the fine leather. And by the way, those leather pieces, I should mention, all had dual de plank clasp uh, on them. Uh, we're now going to go to a, a, a bracelet model. So maybe that's an excuse, Rick, to talk a little bit about your approach to the creation of a bracelet. Well, that's been a whole amazing experience for me for 22, 23 years. Um, designing bracelets to be Swiss done versus my previous company, which was the largest watch company um, at its time in America, where we didn't have to worry about uh, complications, Swiss costs, hand labor, hand polishing, hand steel carving, not computer done. Remember, none of this is computer. Well, the first really serious incident I had was I was introducing another amazing complication, grand complication with everything, in stainless steel. And I needed great bracelet. And the bad news is when I went over there and I said, I need great bracelets, 
they brought out about five or six bracelets, and I couldn't understand how come so little. And they said, in Europe, and this is a fact, about 70% of all of the men's watches sold have leather straps. I said, well, that's nice, because in America, 60 to 70 percent in America have metal bracelet attachments. So we better get busy working with me to design amazing, super quality, well done braceleting. Now, the one on this watch is one of our unique stainless steel. But here we did it different. We did a hand satining in the links on the edges, two side edges are satin. And the center link is mirror diamond lapped and polished. Now, why we did it? Because you get the contrast. Again, it makes an optical presentation sparkling in the center. It is very wide, and it does show. And then two little satin frames around each one. That's, you know, what it's about. And by the way, when we did this case, we did the same thing. So we took the case, and we made it what we call our two-step bezel. Because you've all seen the plain flat bezel, and they polish it. They right. do lots of things. But this one has two steps to the bezel, and the bezel is hand diamond left and polished to a mirror finish, but the entire rest of the case, including the lugs and the sides, are all hand satin finished. And by the way, if you can get a picture of the side of this case, I don't think you'd be able to see it, but on the side is the hand engraved limited edition sequence number. This one particular piece is engraved on the side, and this number is 117 over 300. So this actually is the 117th piece of this model that we produced. There are only 300 out there, which means you're not going to see this watch on other people's wrists going up and down the street. You're not going to see it all over in store windows. You're not going to see it except in a store that understands and appreciates super high quality, amazing design, do it first. The most amazingly done limited edition complications from Switzerland. And by the way, we are the number one producer in the entire world of pure Swiss limited edition complications. So that's, we're proud of that too. Uh, Rick, let's talk a little bit about the, the, the dial. And I was wondering if you could do a couple of things for us. Could you talk a bit about the, the physical uh, construction and maybe define what guilloche used correctly is? And also talk a bit about the color you chose. Okay, depending upon the model, um, this one, um, we're based in South Florida. And I need amazing finishes, amazing colors. Remember, I want to do everything first, but it has to be special. So somebody down here said to me, Rick, why don't you try using a brown dial? And I said, well, listen, being in the watch business at that point, maybe 40 plus years. And he said, did you ever? And I said, no, I never did a brown dial. And he said, you know why? And I said, well, I don't know. I didn't think anybody would buy just a brown dial watch. He says, well, maybe you'll do something first. You'll do it amazing. It won't be a plain dark brown dial. You know, you'll come up with something. I said, okay. The first thing I did is I said, you know what, we're in South Florida, and the nearest interesting place to South Florida is Havana, Cuba. The only thing Havana, in my memory, they were famous all over the world, was the finest cigars in the world with the finest, most expensive tobacco. So, of course, that led to the next sentence, gee, why don't we call the special color you're going to create Havana Tobacco Brown? And I did. And it's an amazing color because it's beautiful. And then I said, now we have to decorate the face of the Havana Tobacco Brown, which became the first step into all dialings we do. We hand guilloche engraving with a cutting die. A person actually has a machine and a cutting die that they run the cutting, the cutting needle, if you will, up and down or across the metal die by hand. And in the one I'm holding, it's a vertical guilloche engraved dial done in a pinstripe movement. So you'll actually see a pattern left and right on the dial when the light plays off of it. Don't forget double anti-reflective coated sapphire crystal to make sure you see the Havana tobacco brown. And by the way, we added more models because the first model we did in the chronograph sold out in 30 days, 300 pieces. Everybody said, what do I do? I said, you wait till I make some new ones. We did, and it took three or four years to even as you know what happened. Every important watch company in the world added a brown dial. Well, Rick, I want to leap from the dial, and let's talk quickly here again about the, the complications, because I, I refer to it as the, as the rainbow day, but uh, I'm not sure what name you use, but the, the, the day of the week going across the 12th. You did it right again. Um, remember, I've been in this at that point probably 40-plus years, and I want to design new first times. What can I do better? 
That's one of my things. I got to do it better than whatever it was last time. So what I did is I looked at day dates, for example, and they always had been in two odd angular sides of a watch. They put the date in one place and they put the calendar usually at three. And you got to look sideways to see what's going on. Well, I decided I don't want to have an FRI or an MON and that I wanted to spell out, honestly, the whole day of the week. Well, you can't do it in a teeny little box. So I needed to re-engineer the movement, build all new, new plates, day, date plates. And I did a big curve at 12 o'clock to show you the full day spelled out on your watch. And by the way, the curve turned out really good instead of trying to do a rectangular box, if you will. Because remember, the dial, the dial of the watch is the thing that people are going to look at. And either you catch their eye or you don't catch their eye. Well, I think uh, everybody that's a, a fan of Jean Marcel can certainly talk about how eye-catching they are. And, and one of the things I greatly admire about Jean Marcel is that I, I don't consider your designs really outlandish, really over the top. I think it's safe to say that you guys mostly do the fantastic, beautiful dress watch. And that's so often thought of understatement, but yet... John Marcel, and maybe this comes back to the diamond lapped and polishing uh, for starters. There is something about what you guys build that transcends that. Th these really become wrist candy. They really become something that uh, people gravitate to. They want to know more about it. Some of the collectors have already named some of the things you just you know, brought up. One of them is that this is a handmade work of art that you can wear on your wrist that tells you all kinds of timing information. And that's a great one. I love that, that concept. And it is. It's a handmade, mechanical work of art that has such miniature ability to tell you hours, minutes, seconds, dates, days. And in our case of our Vertecron, um, gives you chronograph timing as well. So I get a big kick out of doing these different things. Well, Rick, I want to uh, thank you uh, for taking time out uh, tonight and being on, on, on the show with us. Let me recap for everybody. Uh, the first piece we showed you guys was the Claris. That's the one that has the concave bezel. You have one done in white, one done in yellow. And as Rick shared earlier, so uh, since he's here live on the show, we can talk about that. You are owning these actually below cost. Now, Rick has obviously restricted the quantity that he's willing to do this with. But while they last, they're available. And again, uh, if necessary, if this will help you, I encourage you to consider uh, PayPal credit to really be able to spread this out. The other thing that we showed you is the piece featuring the Havana tobacco brown dial, and that is presented on the bracelet. Uh, that one also, we were talking about this just before uh, creating the show for you guys, uh, is also actually being made available to you guys below cost. So uh, that's, uh, th these are two fantastic uh, opportunities uh, Rick, we're going to wrap this up, but thank you for taking the time out. And, and even more so than being on the show, thank you for being so aggressive uh, with the pricing and making uh, tonight's show such a, a pleasure. And I know a lot of the collectors tonight are uh, very grateful for your generosity. So thank you. Tim, it's always a pleasure. You know what? What could be better than working with an honest buddy who's been a friend for over a decade who knows so much about what I do 24-7 and really understands and appreciates the difference. Thank you for being you. You're very special. Well, that, that's uh, very kind of you, Rick. I, I appreciate that. Everybody out there, thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's been my pleasure to host tonight. Obviously, our thanks to Rick Kalina being our guest. And you guys stick around because we've got a lot more in the works, and we're going to be back with another edition of Talk About Watches Live very soon. Be well, everybody.